Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Today's video is going to be a little uh, <laughs> controversial, not really. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 looks like hot dog cheeks. And if that sounds like a controversial opinion, people have always complained about Call of Duty since the Paleolithic era, okay? So to give you a quick bit of context, uh, my channel is not a Call of Duty channel. I don't really rely on each and every single entry being successful to, 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 to pay the mortgage every year, okay? So this is coming straight from the heart. Call of Duty I played since COD 4, and there was a period in my life where I would play every single entry since COD 4 pretty religiously, right? Uh, up until Black Ops 2, uh, I played that a lot, and I remember the hype for Black Ops 2 being massive. But after that, when COD Ghost, Advanced Warfare, a lot of these games came out, I just simply didn't have the time nor the drive to continue playing these games year after year. I started jumping more into single player titles and just played other multiplayer games like Titanfall, and then later on I would just play Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, but to understand, I've played Call of Duties every year, okay? If it's not at launch day, it's always around Black Friday when the games are half off, okay? Now, Call of Duty to me has always been a pretty decent value, and let me explain why. Yes, it's like Madden for shooter addicts, okay? Year after year, Call of Duty is effectively the same game, okay? It's the same uh, rough experience, right? It's a, it's a goddamn shooter, and that's what you expect. But Call of Duty games have always been a pretty good value prospect, because usually you get a pretty good campaign. Uh, you know, even the worst Call of Duty campaigns, in my opinion, are fun. They're like watching action movies, okay? It's why I go to, to watch John Wick. I just love watching guns, action, you know, car chases, shootouts, explosions, hot chicks. Can you, you can believe that I'm a Spike TV viewer, right? Just by saying that shit. Then, of course, you've got cooperative play. So with Call of Duty games, sometimes you get the zombies, sometimes you get the spec ops, sometimes you get extinction mode from COD Ghost where you're fighting a la mouse and shit. And then, of course, multiplayer, okay? So every year's Call of Duty multiplayer can be good or bad. Uh, each developer has their own spin on it. And usually back in the day with Call of Duty games, you know, you had games like Modern Warfare 2 that kept on adding maps, added weapon levels, added, you know, a bunch of unlocks over time. If you play Modern Warfare 2 on the Xbox 360 and occasionally from time to time, I'll just play MW2 with bots and just grind offline just to sort of therapeutically relax, remind myself of the good old days on PC. You also have Black Ops where they introduce like currency systems, wager matches, Black Ops 2 where they introduce like the pick 10 system, and each and every single Call of Duty game around that era had its own beautiful set of maps, beautiful set of gameplay changes, and it genuinely did feel like if you looked beyond the surface level, each and every single Call of Duty game was trying to sort of, uh, trying, to trying to make its mark, if you will, right? And it's because of that 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 era is looked so fondly upon, right? There's still people to this day that tell you about how fun the original Modern Warfare 2 is. They'll tell you, oh, Black Ops 1 is goaded. Black Ops 2 is amazing. Shit, even Call of Duty Ghosts is a fun time. But nowadays, when you look at Call of Duty, it's actually a fucking, like, I would say Call of Duty, for the most part, in today's day and age, is sort of like a microtransaction simulator with kind of a game attached onto it. So I'll give you a quick idea. I don't hate modern Call of Duty. In fact, if anything, I kind of didn't like Call of Duty up until Modern Warfare 2019. I think that game to this day is still a very, very good Call of Duty game. In fact, in my opinion, it's probably one of the top three Call of Duty games in history. And I know for some people who are like, opinion immediately invalidated. Look, I'm just a, I'm just a regular guy, okay? I just play video games for the fun of it. I'm not a competitive player, okay? To understand, very few people in the Call of Duty space are competitive players, okay? If you are in the space, you are earning money, you are playing at a high competitive level, yes, you are a competitive player. If you're sitting in your house jerking off into a sock, playing the game, uh, you know, on ranked play constantly day in and day out without ever actually earning a dime off of this game or getting some sort of prestige in, in, in the professional circuit, you are unemployed. And if that sounds mean, it's because, yeah, I don't intend to play lighthearted here. Ladies and gentlemen, I think some of that broad appeal to Call of Duty, especially back when I was growing up, has slowly been lost to time as the creators for the game are very much focused on hyper-balancing it and kind of attuning Call of Duty to this almost like league play. A lot of Call of Duty has shifted to movement-based gameplay, like where people are just zipping around the map, sliding around, flying through windows, uh, versus some of that grounded reality. 
And, you know, it's cool if you enjoy it. Obviously, it feels like a inferior version of Titanfall. If you really care about movement, you might as well switch to that game. But what I'm trying to come across here, or what I'm trying to get across is, for the most part, if you're not in that professional esports circuit, which again, very few people are, your opinion of the game pretty much relegates around casual or, you know, just playing the game as it is, as a regular standard gamer. And in regards to that, a lot of the game's progression systems, a lot of the value you used to get, in my opinion, from the PS3, 360, heck, even that early PlayStation 4, Xbox One lifecycle of Call of Duty content has slowly withered away as this franchise has increasingly become reliant on live services and constantly reliant on the Battle Royale mode that it ships with. It almost feels like Call of Duty in today's day and age is sort of like a second banana to Warzone, which is the free-to-play Battle Royale version, and uh, it's just not an overall good feeling. The multiplayer feels less feature-filled, and honestly, it feels less impactful. People used to be hyped for Call of Duty releases every year. Now the honeymoon phases last maybe a week or two at best, and people just move on from this game really quickly. So the player bases effectively become uh, just filled with the most try-hard of individuals, people who are probably just grinding out weapon levels so that they can use these upgraded loadouts in Warzone, if anything. So the recent Call of Duty game, MW2019, was a fun game. It pretty much harkened back to old classic Call of Duties. You know, every single weapon had like 71 levels to go, so it really felt like you got a lot of bang out of progression. So if you really like that stuff like I do, I love leveling up shit. You can literally level up every single gun to your heart's content, unlock a mass ton of attachments, play around with the gunsmith system so you could really craft some crazy weapons uh, from just one platform. The game had plenty of decent maps day one, all the game modes were there, and it was a fun time playing with friends. Then of course, later on, Call of Duty added Warzone and you know, the whole situation sort of spiraled on from there. Now, since then, we've got Black Ops Cold War, which was a fun campaign. Multiplayer, not so exciting for me. Uh, Call of Duty, uh, what was it? The World War II Vanguard? You know, people played that shit just to level up their weapons for Warzone. Cool. Uh, then you had Modern Warfare 2, which is quite possibly one of the weakest entries in the franchise. New Modern Warfare 2, not Modern Warfare 2 2009, which is still one of the best games of all time. See, Modern Warfare 2019, the reason I liked it so much is that Activision, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer were not afraid to have some balls again. Remember, Modern Warfare 2 2009 was the game that literally popularized the ability to play an actual live terrorist attack in a video game. Probably one of the most controversial missions ever, no Russian was introduced in that franchise, in that game. See, Modern Warfare 2019 takes that mission and just throws it out, makes it look like Dora the Explorer. One of my favorite missions in the campaign for MW 2019 is Piccadilly Circus. See, a lot of people hype up Clear House because it's like, oh, you're raiding some terrorist compound and you got some decisions to make. Piccadilly literally drops you into Piccadilly Circus, the United Kingdom, has you witness a terror attack happen live in front of you as you cannot engage terrorists before they're actually a visible threat, apparently. And then, as you're playing through the mission, all you see are civilians running around, UK police officers trying to hold off this terror attack that they've never experienced, actual terrorists dressed up in civilian clothing, firing at civilians. This game, if anything, makes you feel completely useless. Every single time you try to save somebody's life, for one life, four get taken. It's actually a mission that left my mouth open the first time I played it. And this is just one of many missions. This is literally a game where they shoot a kid in the face for crying out loud. They were not afraid to take any like, you know, gutsy positions. Modern Warfare 2's campaign is boring as all hell. Nothing cool happens in that campaign like 2019. In fact, Modern Warfare 2's entire system, if you load up its menu, feels like you're playing like some Netflix clone. That, that, that literally is what it appears to be. Um, the UI is a joke. All right, this is just a nitpick from me. The campaign wasn't that oppressive. Spec Ops was an even bigger joke than MW 2019, where like you literally have an absolute crumb of content. And the multiplayer, in my opinion, died really quickly once they introduced the gunsmithing system, where in order to unlock attachments for one gun, like for instance, this SMG, the Lockman Sub, I would have to actually start using the Rap H in LMG to unlock stuff for the SMG. Why they decided to go down this route, I don't know, all right? And I hope to God they don't bring this for MW3. 
Which brings this to the subject of today's video. You might be wondering why it took me that long. I wanted to add context, okay? I wanted to really describe history with this franchise. So Modern Warfare 3 is coming out uh, again, all right? This is the upgraded Modern Warfare 3. And you can pre-order that shit now for a juicy price of 90 Canadian dollars or 130 if you want to buy the stupid Vault Edition, okay? You get a couple extra skins with that. Ooh! But when you get Modern Warfare 3, what does this come with, okay? So for instance, it's got the uh, sequel to Modern Warfare 2 story, which, honest to God, I would probably play it. This is the only exciting part about Modern Warfare 3. You know, it's wild for me to say that I'm actually excited just for the campaign of a COD game. Not the multiplayer, not the co-op, just to play the story that lasts maybe, what, four or five hours? But hey, it's a fun story. It's like watching an action movie. I'm down for that Spike TV shit. Now, the multiplayer is where things get really embarrassing. So Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer is effectively an $80 DLC pack, $90 Canadian, where what they do is they provide 16 playable maps now. Where are these 16 maps from? If you're looking at this gameplay trailer, this reveal trailer that they've showcased, you can actually see that the maps include Favela from Modern Warfare 2, the old MW2. They've got Estate, Wasteland, Afghan, uh, Derail. <laughs> you get the idea? They've just remade Modern Warfare 2's entire map pool <laughs> into Modern Warfare 3 2023. That's really what you're getting, okay? So for $90, the multiplayer has effectively come out to providing you the same exact map experience that MW2 had. Now, are these bad maps? Absolutely not. No, 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 no. See, what Activision is banking on is nostalgia for the gaming base, okay? That's really it. They're literally just banking on nostalgia for the actual players. In fact, nostalgia has been sort of the name of the game for Call of Duty for like at least this entry as well, where they're actually selling you sound packs from old Modern Warfare 2 in new Modern Warfare 2. Dog, when players are clamoring for the original game's MP3 files, the WAV files on your modern game, maybe you need to reassess what you're actually producing, okay? Just sticking Modern Warfare 2's legendary name on any game that you're producing does not make it as good as Modern Warfare 2. That's just you selling Modern Warfare 2's nostalgia to people. And they're doing the same thing with MW3. Now, looking up the gameplay from other creators, yeah, it is in fact just regular maps. This is from Jack Frags. He was playing on Skid Row, which is one of my favorite maps from MW2. And while the game appears to have like enhanced movement, which is basically where players are sprinting around, sliding around, basically doing what no soldier would do. The kids yearn for Titanfall 3, okay? Let's get to making that, EA. Now, of course, I'm not just relying on somebody else's materials too. I also downloaded the open beta, which yes, if you wait a couple days, you don't have to pay a pre-order fee to play this demo early. And I know people are gonna say, but Muda, this is a beta. Uh, clearly, it's not representative of the final product. Okay, first off, let's be realistic here and cut the crap, a beta these days might as well just be considered part of the advertising budget because this is effectively what the final game will play like, okay? So again, most of the community loves Rust, so the gameplay you're seeing here is from Rust, and I'm not that great at the game. I'm playing on the sticks, mind you, no keyboard and mouse. The game is very hard to discern between like what is like actual Modern Warfare 2019, what is Modern Warfare 2, and what is Modern Warfare 3. Honestly, if they didn't change the fonts to the game, I wouldn't be able to discern which game is which. This game doesn't necessarily do anything new. The movement might be a little bit faster as compared to the previous game, but I don't think it's that much to really uh, seal the deal. Uh, other than that, you know, the fact that they're somehow letting 6v6 on Rust, which feels like a total cluster, by the way, but again, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, it's a serviceable Call of Duty, but again, nothing that it does is so wholly different than even the Modern Warfares of old or that 360 PS4 early tier of like Call of Duty releases. It just feels like the exact same game. It feels like what Modern Warfare 2 should have actually been, except now the player base has to fork up like 60, 70, or $90 Canadian for it, which is baffling. In fact, it might as well just be considered a DLC for Modern Warfare 2, okay? It, as far as purchasing the game goes, that's what it feels like, okay? It feels like I'm just getting $90 add-on content for what should have existed in Modern Warfare 2 to begin with. We have finally got Modern Warfare 2 remastered in Modern Warfare 3, a DLC pack for Modern Warfare 2 2022. 
So even beyond all of this, one of the biggest slaps in the dick was what I saw right here. Now I love Actman. He's one of the he's one of my favorite friends. I would consider him a good personal friend. Been on the podcast a lot of times. But it really shows how low in the Marianas trench the bar is for the Call of Duty community. They got actual factions in Modern Warfare 3 and not just my team versus enemy team. Let's go! So here you can see on the defeat screen, they finally introduced Rangers and Spetsnaz. Now, in the original Modern Warfare 2, you know, back before the days of Kortak and like what a Sov grew and all these stupid like homogenized special operation units, they used to actually refer to op like teams as like the SAS, the Navy SEALs. Uh, well, they couldn't drop Taliban in the game, so they used Op 4 instead. But that's what they brought back. This isn't new. This is just literally Call of Duty developers going into the game's code and replacing like certain names. <laughs> with like their actual attributed names from the OG maps. We should not be sucking off the COD developers for this, okay? We should not be sucking off anybody for this. This is very, very basic stuff. Now, as long as you thought that was like wild, they also have zombies. Open world zombies! Whoa, that's crazy, dude. So zombies, if you ever realize what it was, it was a uh, round-based scenario where basically uh, you would get dropped in with three other players or by yourself, and you would basically survive round after round of zombies, right? Basically, zombies would attack you. Uh, you would just constantly be uh, acquiring points, unlocking new areas on a map that you would play, uh, going through the random box and getting shit in return, pack-a-punching your weapons, and basically seeing how long you could last uh, before you eventually died, okay? It's a very fun, addictive game mode. And back when it showed up in World at War, it captured gamers' hearts till the end of days, okay? So I play zombies in COD all the time. I recently loaded up Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 even to play some OG zombies. Maps like Kino Toten, maps like uh, Notch Durant Toten, basically a lot of the fun OG maps. You know, all the way before this open world, uh, kind of like open district, kind of like mass craze that zombies eventually became. So I really enjoy zombies. I enjoy round-based stuff. And I was kind of like, oh, maybe the open world stuff is pretty cool. What is the open world zombies? Well, looking at gameplay released, I shit you not, it literally is the map from Warzone 2.0. They literally used Al Mazra, the current Warzone 2 map, and unleashed open world zombies, which, by the way, the gameplay that you're seeing over here, I don't know what's happened with the gaming industry, but it always feels like they get some absolute lemon to record the footage. I don't know if the Polygon reviewer for Doom was playing this game, but the way that this person plays zombies is downright embarrassing, okay? There's no aim down sights, there's no going for headshots, if anything, it's just running around like Captain Kangaroo. But this is open world zombies, okay? Some areas on the map have high threat, some have low threat, and the only cool part about this is playing with like six players total, okay? But if you're looking at the map, it's literally the Warzone 2 map brought in for open world zombies, okay? So get excited. Woo! Wild shit indeed. It's just DMZ with goddamn zombies put into it. Hell, that that's all it is. Occasionally you'll get some objectives where you have to go into houses and clear spores. So if you if you never bought Rainbow Six Quarantine, well, I guess you kind of have it now. If anything, this feels like Call of Duty Extraction from Ghosts as well. That co-op mode kind of mixed in with this open world, almost like Battle Royale-esque zombies mode that they have put into it. I'm sure this might actually have some fun to it. I may play like a couple rounds before I uneventually uninstall this shit and start playing like <laughs> like Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, all right? Maybe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 hands down feels like one of the biggest letdowns in Call of Duty history, and that's actually saying a lot. The Call of Duty community has always been sort of sitting on this weird uh, COD cycle, we call it, where uh, every time, every year, it's always this franchise never innovates, never does anything, never goes beyond what you expect. Uh, they always release the same shit year after year. People complain about it, and they just end up buying the game anyways. I'm not even going to tell you not to buy Call of Duty. Telling you not to buy Call of Duty when it's probably one of the most highest grossing game franchises in the world is dumb. There's no boycott that you can do to Call of Duty that'll make it change. This is frankly where this franchise is nowadays. But that doesn't stop me from telling people just how much of a ripoff Modern Warfare 3 is going to be. And I've seen a couple people who are like, yo, we are so back with Call of Duty, okay? 
what is this game doing that's actually in capturing you, is what I'm asking, all right? This is just Call of Duty, as it always has been year after year, except this iteration feels exceptionally lazy, okay? In fact, the multiplayer is effectively just Modern Warfare 2 brought back again, okay? The zombies is not zombies in its traditional sense, and even with this new open world experience, it's not exactly setting the world on fire. The campaign is arguably the only aspect of it that excites me. And when a Call of Duty campaign is the only thing that gets my rocks ready, that's, that's pretty indicative of where the franchise is heading. But that said though, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is me, Mudahar, and um, nothing's gonna change. But yeah, this, uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I'm out.